especially extended electronic soup podcast, the accessible game base, and the baton over to dark of audio games dot net. You are in safe hands. Hello, good morning. This is Luke, probably more commonly known as Dark, at least around the internet. Yes, it's me that's responsible for sticking all the random rubbish on Audio Games Net. You now know who to blame. I might also have uh, run into you, or rather you might run into me, on um, the Odyssey mailing list, or indeed various other places. I do tend to crop up all over the place. Now, Barry has um, asked me to come and talk to you today about audio games, and more specifically about some of the more complex audio games that have been produced recently. For a very, very long time, indeed for quite a lot longer than I've been playing audio games, most of the games that have been produced, it's not fair to say all, but a a good many of them, have been fairly simple. They've either been sort of left, right, well, sort of arcade-style affairs, where you need to react quickly and rack up high score, or they've been um, audio adaptations of fairly traditional games, card games, puzzle games, word games, that sort of thing. And not that there's anything wrong with having games of those sorts of types, but there has been this um, this problem that something more complex hasn't been available. Now, of course, there have been for a good long while, indeed I was playing them before I was playing audio games, a variety of games that can be played with a screen reader that are more complex. Things like interactive fiction or MUDs or games played in a web browser. But um, these are, you know, fairly limited in a lot of... Well, they have various limits. The biggest one, of course, being that they only use text. There's also various multiplayer problems, but that's the subject for another day. So those, so there really hasn't been anything that a player can really sort of get into in audio, anything with a sort of lot of atmosphere and plot and a lot of uh, complex actions that can be taken in the game, games that really draw the player in and keep the player going, where, of course, in the mainstream, there's been these sorts of things, you know, going right from the 1980s onwards. However... I am pleased to say that this situation is very much changing, and indeed when Barry asked me to pick three games to demonstrate to you, I was quite spoiled for choice, because I couldn't think of which three games um, to show, because because there have been so many produced recently that are really quite fantastic in terms of their ambience and their replayability and how complex they are. And indeed, you know, if anyone is interested in this sort of thing, I would urge them to go and check out the database at Audio Games Net, or indeed the uh, the larger list of websites at pcsgames.net, um, and just have a look through them and look for some of these, you know, audio games because audio games are becoming a lot more interesting and more complex. Okay, advertisement over. I will try not to advertise anymore. So, what games do we have today? What games did I eventually decide to show you? Well, the first game is a game which um, has been in development for a long while and has quite a complicated developmental history. And it is a game called Mysteries of the Ancients, produced by Thomas Ward of USA Games. In this game, you play an archaeologist, Dr. Angela Carter, And you are doing a sort of Indiana Jones-esque infiltration of a tomb to try and retrieve the Orb of Wisdom. Now, what makes this game interesting and complex is that it's an audio side-scrolling adventure game. So it is a side-scroller where you will hear um, things to your left and to your right and need to respond to them. But it is also a bit of a maze and adventure game. There are, for example, switches and doors. There's various weapons you can use. There are puzzles. There's burning torches. There's all sorts of fun stuff. In fact, I can't really detail everything that's in the game because I would need a hell of a lot more time, and I just don't have it. So what I'm just going to do is start the game and give you a quick overview, 
and uh, you know I might end up falling down a big hole but hey there you go now this game is still in uh, beta at the moment but is due to be released later on this year so you know think of this as a nice little preview as well no selection menu programs menu accessories have sub menu there is Hal. Audio games have sub menu. Audio games menu. That is often. Now we have them indexed by developer. USA games interactive menu. Two. Uh, and the first one is. Two license of mysteries. Read me. Mystery uninstall users. Update direct change log license of mysteries of the ancients. Voice off. Right. Shut up, Hal. And we're going to start the game. And the first thing you'll hear will be the logo. Select the menu item. Yeah, nice little intro there. So we're now in the main menu of the game, and we're just going to have a quick start. Now, I don't promise to do particularly well, because I usually play games on headphones, and as you will hear, I'm having to use speakers at the moment in order to be able to uh, talk to you at the same time. So uh, my apologies if I end up dying horribly, but uh, hopefully it'll still give you a good overview and explain why this game is um, different to what's been produced before. So. New game. Continue. New game. Exit program. New game. N. New game. Select difficulty level. Beginner B. Uh, I'm a big wimp, so I'm going to be playing on beginner. And we shall now hear the game's intro. The inscription reads... I, Athena, goddess of wisdom, have placed all of the mysteries of the ancients into an orb. Whoever wishes to attain the orb must seek me in the city of the dead and best me in combat. The one who possesses the orb shall become the wisest of men. Only the bravest and wisest shall prevail. Now, that clunking sound you will hear is a switch. So I'm just going to walk to the right. Oh, first we have a burning torch to pick up. Burning torch. Now the reason we've pressed that switch is that further over here to the right is a statue. Into here comes another trouble. Room. Oh, and we have oh something nasty which I'm just going to retreat from. So I'm first going to draw my weapon. We have various weapons available, uh, some of which we own and don't own yet. Dark in here. Nine millimeter pistol. Take that, you. Right now, we uh, will light the torch to see what's in this room. Oh, good. We have some items. Ancient scroll. And as you will hear, the item's position is dictated by stereo. Healing potion. And that is, of course, a rope. Now, uh, rather like um, a lot of um, other fairly uh, complex adventure games, you need to uh, draw and holster your weapons, so I will just holster my pistol. Oh. You see my holster weapon? Nine millimeter pistol is drawn. Ah. Oh. Now we climb up the rope. Now that dripping sound you can hear to the left and right actually indicates where the uh, ledges we can get to are. So if we just jump to the left off the road now. Here comes trouble. Oh dear. Burning touch. As I said, I'm not particularly good at playing on speakers, so I think we're going to have to drink one of these, drink that potion we found. Oh, I feel much better. Yes, I'm sure you do. That crumbling let sound means we're at the edge of the ledge, so... Jump off the rope, and across, and there is a statue, which we're going to have to pass. We uh, luckily activated the switch for that earlier. Here. Uh, incidentally, if I press the uh, V key, we 
can have a quick look round and see what's around us. Stone door, to the right, three meters, small chasm, below, to the left, two meters, small chasm, below, to the right, zero meters. So we're on the edge of this chasm, uh, which we're now going to jump over. That sort of evil wind sound is the sound of the chasm. Oh. And we're across. Now, I think there might be some nasty here. I need, I need more ammo. Oh dear. Oh. What you heard there was I tried to shoot it, only I didn't have enough ammo. Uh, which wasn't particularly clever. That was a skeleton, incidentally. Oh well, no. Here mind. comes trouble. I need oh, a light. Hell. We have a centaur. It's dark in here. <laughs> we just had. Oh dear. Getting into fist fight with centaur, not good idea. I need a light. Down there, we have some water, which we are going to jump into. Oh, oh this water's freezing. Yes. We are now swimming to the left. I need a light. Now we have the fire pits. Nine millimeter pistol, not drawn. These are quite a pain because uh, you have to get fairly close to them before jumping over them, and there is no warning sound. So you need to use the view command. Fire pit to the left, eight meters. Fire pit to the left, two meters. Ladder above to the left, five meters. Stone statue to the left, eleven meters. Fire pit to the left, seven meters. Fire pit to the left, one meter. Ladder above to the left, four meters. Stone statue to the left, ten meters. Fire pit to the left, seven meters. Fire pit to the left, one meter. Ladder above to the left, four meters. Stone statue to the left, ten meters. Fire pit to the left, seven meters. Fire pit to the left, one meter. Ladder above to the left, four meters. Stone statue to the left, ten meters. The reason I'm using the view command such a lot, incidentally, Fire pit to the is left, because seven um, meters. Fire pit to the left. Zero meters. Ladder above. Well, as I said, I'm not very good at playing on speakers. And this one really does require quite fine audio control. Anyway, we are next to this uh, flaming pit of fire. So over we go. Just hit the lever there. Along a bit more. Oh dear, we have another fire pit. Zero meters. Fire pit to the right. Five meters. Stone statue to the left. Three meters. Oh. Here we go. Here comes trouble. Oh dear. <laughs> As I said, this is what happens when you run out of ammo. Burning touch. At least we have a torch. Oh, looks like a dead end. So we're at a dead end at the moment. Fire pit to the right, two meters. Fire pit to the right, eight meters. Stone statue to the left, zero meters. Fire pit to the right, one meter. Fire pit to the right, seven meters. Stone statue to the left, one meter. Fire pit to the right, one meter. Fire pit to the right, seven meters. Stone statue to the left, one meter. Fire pit to the right, zero meters. Fire pit to the right, seven meters. Stone statue to the left. Two meters. Oh. Fire pit to the left, five meters. Fire pit to the right, zero meters. Stone statue to the left, eight meters. Oh. So we've just jumped those fire pits and now we're uh, it's dark in here. going to swim over to the right. I love the uh, atmosphere in this game, the music, the dripping water, the sounds, it's absolutely fantastic. As well as the fact that it is also a maze of this.
Here comes trouble. Oh dear. Ah, but it's. Sorry, you have. Oh control. dear. Select the menu item. Exit program. Well, um, apart from my <laughs> appalling habit of getting into fist fights with nasties, um, and my very bad use of weapons, um, that is Tomb Hunter Mysteries of the Ancients, which, as I said, is a side-scrolling adventure. Now, we've had side-scrollers before, but this is the first one that has that sort of layout and that sort of complexity. You have switches and doors, like in, for example, Prince of Persia, You've got fairly detailed gap jumping, um, and of course you've got monsters and weapons and all the rest of it. So that was um, hopefully a good introduction to one of the uh, games I'm going to show you. Starting up. Now, the second game, audio games, audio games, into menu. is one that's right. uninstalled into, into. I've well, I've been personally involved with for quite a while because I was on the private alpha testing team for this, and uh, I am better at it. Ha ha! And this is the game Entombed, which is the first ever audio RPG. Um, now, essentially, this is a randomly generating dungeon RPG entirely in audio. Um, so you have audio sounds for the monsters, you can, um, and it's got all the features of um, a roguelike game. So the uh, dungeon generates at random, you've got randomly generating monsters, you've got cards to unlock, you've um, got loads of weapons and armor, which again is randomized, you've got bosses, you've got, um, <laughs> well, all sorts of classes to play. It is a hell of a game, and uh, once again, I would really find it rather difficult to, well, present even a tenth of um, the features of the game. So I think all that's going to happen is I'm going to just have to turn it on and play it for a little bit. So we're going to start the game. This is the particularly cool intro, which um, is very cool. The legend cool, tells of a city but rather long. lost beneath the sand. Welcome to Entomb version 1.0 to K. Please see wiki.blind-games.com for documentation on this version. Main menu. Start new game. This is Microsoft Sappy that is speaking uh, with a voice. So that's the self-voicing option that uh, has been used. You can use a screen reader as well, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Load existing game. Start new game. Um, so we're going to start a new game, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of the game. Character creation. Please type the character's given name. Now, what should we call our test character? Let's be very inventive. Now enter the character's family name. This character's name is Dark Darkness. <laughs> is this okay? Is Dark Darkness a male or female? Choose your race. Human. Now we can play as various races because, you know, in your usual RPG style, you have various races and they can be different job. You know, they can have different jobs and different skills and all that sort of thing. I'll just whiz down them just to show you some of the available options. Goblin. Elf. Half elf. Ogre. No. Dwarf. Half elf. Half elf. Fairy. Human. Goblin. Elf. Um, now, for this demonstration, I'm going to play an elf. Choose your job. Fighter. And again, we have a whole load of options. Mage. Healer. Thief. Ranger. Necro. Adventure. Druid. Bard. Monk. Paladin. Fighter. Mage. Healer. Thief. Ranger. Necro. Adventure. Necromancer. And just for interest's sake, we're going to be a necromancer. Start a new game. Darkness was caught raising a personal undead army of tiger skeletons. For this reason, the dungeon is your new home. Your adventure has begun. Now we are in. Um, now we are in a dungeon. We can walk left, right, up, and down because this game, like RPGs, has a battle view and a normal view. And this is the normal view, um, where we're sort of walking around on a, almost a grid-based map, as it were. So we can look at which space is or is not explored. Nearest unexplored space. East three. Probably can't hear, but the sound of the wind. Encountered three oh. eyes. Dark's pet. Cave bat two. Cave bat three. Dark darkness. One right. damage. Dark darkness. Fight. Um, okay, so in the middle of my explanation, we have run straight into a fight. Yes, it's at times like this, you really wish you knew how to edit. Anyway, we are now in a fight, and now what you can do. Um, magic. You can fight, you can do magic. Different. Battle timeline. Different magic. You can do all sorts of things. Now, just for interest's sake, I'm going to show you some magic. Summon bows. Ice blast. 
and I'm going to show you an Ice Blast. Now, one of the interesting features about the game is you can actually target your attacks. Cave Bat 2, Cave Bat 3. So I'm going to attempt to hit this bat in the head with my uh, magic. Nine damage. The Cave Bat has been defeated. Cave Bat 1, Dark Darkness, one damage. Cave Bat 2, Dark Pet, one damage. Dark Pet. One. That is my, has been my uh, faithful Eight companion the who I start with. Mangled. The cave bat has been defeated. Dark darkness. Fight. Magic. Summon ice blast. Next verse, same as the first. Cave bat two. Seven damage. The cave bat's torso is mangled. The cave bat has been defeated. Sixty experience awarded. Now, as I was saying, you can, you may or may not be able to hear the wind sound because the uh, different pitch and direction of the wind can actually show where you are. So, for example, there's a deep-pitched winch which shows we have free space to our, to the south. We can also hit the slash key. Nearest unexplored space. Ease. Which will give us the nearest unexplored space. Um, now, just for the sake of novelty, because usually this is a bit pointless, but I shall show you for novelty reasons. Magic menu. Choose a caster. Dark, dark, dark darkness. I'm going to show you Choose a spell one of the more interesting spells. Choose a spell. Summon bones. Choose a top cave bat corpse. Cave bat corpse. Cave bat corpse. So we are going to cave bat corpse's bones seep out and reform into a sinister skeleton. We have a skeleton. Hurrah! Also, dark darkness is character details. General in allocate skill we points. We can dark darkness has one skill point. Every level can be improved. Like Ice most blast. RPGs, level one of five. Get skill points that you can spend on things. Banish undead. Level daggers of state swords. Confirmed ice blast. Level 1 of 5. Ice Blast has increased to Let's level 2. More ice Blast confirm changes. Skill point changes saved. General information. Cancelled. Nearest unexplored space. East 2. So through the door. Ah, that means we've found an item. The following items are lying here. Crude 17 large with arrows. You've picked up a crude 17 large. 3 healing potions. You've picked up 3 healing potions. Ah, always useful. That sound is just me walking into walls. But it doesn't really do you any harm. Nearest unexplored space. North one. Ah, uh, we've been all through that room. Nearest unexplored space. East one. It really doesn't. Ah, Encounter three. We have enemies. another fight. Cobble three. Now you shall Eight see our skeleton. skeleton in Stop. one damage. Critically injured. Action. Cobble one. Dark pet. Dark darkness. Fight. Magic. Summon by ice blood. Cobble one. So we are now fighting cobbles, and if we press the X key, this is a male cobbles. He appears not injured. He is wearing a dubious cotton tunic on his torso, a decent large wood buckler on his left arm and a crude linen loin cloth on his waist. He is wielding a poor copper short sword in his left hand. He has no serious injuries. Cobbled, cobbled one. Eleven damage. The cobbled head is mangled. The cobbled has been defeated. That's another cobbled really fun the thing about this game. Cotton tunic off the ground if you can uh, the cave hit skeleton. people in cobbled certain two. body parts, one you damage. can do fatal damage. Dark so I cobbled just two. mangled his head. Cobbled three. The cobble grabs a poor copper short sword off the ground and begins wielding it. Dark's pet. Cobbled three. Four damage. Cobbled two. Cave bat skeleton. Left wing. Light damage. Critically injured. Dark darkness. Fight. Magic. Summon bones. Ice blast. Cobbled two. Nine damage. The cobble's head is mangled. The cobble has been defeated. The cave bat skeleton. Cobbled three. Two damage. Injured. Cobbled three. Dark darkness. Left hand. Light damage. Dark's pet. Cobble three. Eight damage. The cobble has been defeated. 225 experience awarded. Collected one gold. And now, of course, if we look on the floor, we find... The following items are lying here. Cobble corpse. All the stuff. Decent large wood butler. That uh, our enemies had. You picked up a cobble crude linen loin cloth. You co cobble corpse. Dubious cotton tunic. You poor small iron dagger. You picked dubious rosewood butler. You poor copper short sword. You cobble corpse. Cobble dubious cobble dubious copper butler. You picked dubious poor leather loin dubious copper hammer. You cobble co poor leather loin cloth. You pick cobble corpse. Cobble, 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 cancelled. And of course, if we press E, we can. Dark's equipment menu. Torso. Wear things. You're wearing dubious cotton, dubious cotton tunic. You've equipped left arm. Right arm, left. You're wearing right arm, left arm, right arm, left hand. You are holding a decent large bent rosewood branch in poor small iron dagger. Poor copper short sword. Remove decent large poor copper short sword. You can even compare items. Compare this dark darkness. Checking dark darkness is equipped weapons. Compared to the large bent rosewood branch, poor copper short sword is 65% less damaging, 22% softer, 6% more accurate, and 14% cancel. Remove these dubious copper hammer. Cancel. Right hand. Waste. You're wearing nothing. Crude linen loin. Crude linen loin. You've equipped the crude. Cancelled. Options menu. Cancelled. Now, as I said, I was just... Options menu. Exit. As I said, this was just intended to be a brief look because really this Cancel. game is, um, has got... Nearest unexplored space. North 1. Options. Exit. 
Now that Boys. is a very, very quick look at Entombed. Now, Entombed can really take you on for ages. It's got a dedicated mailing list, and indeed there are some really interesting developments planned for Entombed. For example, the Entombed Dungeon Creator, which will let people write their own dungeons and create their own monsters and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, but that is just an example of what can be done in audio. Um, it's got great music, all the monsters make different sounds, it's got a complex system, and um, all in all, it's really quite a phenomenal game, and it's been a fantastic experience for me, because of course, I've been, I was around back in March when um, the game was first sort of proposed, and I was private alpha testing it, and now of course two years later, and it's turned into this gigantic monstrosity. <laughs> appropriately enough. Now, the last game I'm going to show you is a game that has quite literally been released in the past two weeks, though there has been a beta version available previously. And it is a game from GMA Games, who is um, one of the long-standing established audio game developers. And what GMA Games have been quite famous for is producing games that are more complex. In fact, even in the time that uh, there weren't many even, I'm told, back in the DOS days, they were producing more complex stuff. And um, this game is an audio war strategy game. It's called Time of Conflict. No, so I no shall problem. just uh, give you a quick, quick uh, whiz of that. Audio games, has audio games menu, my games menu, mark Time of Conflict, I help for Time of Play, Time of Conflict, voice off. In fact, this game is so new, I haven't uh, bought it, and it's still in its demo version, so you're going to hear the... Uh... Product security. Time of Conflict is a product of GMA Games. You will be asked to enter your registration name and the product key. This information should have been... Okay. Game order it. No. En no. User code date. Three, seven, two, eight. Demonstration mode. You are currently playing in demonstration mode. Yes, this mode. is demonstration In this mode, you are given 100 turns for each new campaign. Battle. Okay. Yeah, this is just a quick demo mode. Main menu. What is it said? We are... We really don't have time to go into this in humongous detail, but this can hopefully just show off a few of the game's more interesting features. Load game, new game. So we'll start. Map type, both size. Campaign 90 by 74. Now, as I said, this is a war strategy game. You command various sorts of units um, infantry, armour, fighters, aircraft carriers, battleships, submarines. Um, and your goal is to capture cities and defeat the enemy. The game is sort of turn-based, but in a very dynamic way. So some things, for example, happen within your turn, some things happen later than your turn. Um, that's just a contributing factor to its complexity. Now, what is really impressive with this game is the map overview, because you have so many ways of viewing the map and viewing the information about your units, even if, like me, you are really terrible at maps. Um, it has phenomenal options, and it's actually very much fun to play, and I probably will be buying it as soon as I can get some cash together. The other thing to note about this game is that the maps actually have graphics as well, so if, like me, you have some degree of vision, you can uh, make use of that, or indeed play it if you, well, play it not using the audio if you so desire. Battle 48, Skirmish 30 by 30 your own maps. Custom map, practice map 24 by 24. So we're just going to try practice map to begin with. Skill level. Bring him on. Don't. It is my turn, Daddy. It is my turn, Daddy. That's the easiest skill level. That will mean that the computer won't destroy us too quickly. Though, as I said, we're not really going to have time to get destroyed. Land versus sea battle types. Combination land and sea battle. Yeah, we can have uh, either. Random battle type. Combination land and sea battle. Let's have... Mirror map. To make the initial world map more fair. Would you like your side of the map to mirror the enemy's side? Yes. Yes. There is water to the north, from the east to south, and to the west. There is water to the north, from the east to south, and to the west. At 20. 23. What would you like to produce? Infantry. So we start off in our city, and we can choose what they produce. And the first thing we need is infantry, because you can't actually capture a city without it. Voice on. Voice off. Excuse me, just remembered I had to turn another bit of hell off. So we'll produce some infantry, because that's, as I said, what you use to capture enemy cities. Time zero. Time one. Time two. Time three. Time four. Time five. Infantry created at 20, 23 points in your city of Vugodo. Your infantry won at 20, 23 within your city of Vugodo. So we take... Idle one moves remaining. We now have to Location control land our in infantry. There is land to the northeast, to the southwest, and to the northwest. 
we now have to control our infantry. And uh, water at 21, 23 across the city. Use the keys to water at 21, water at tw- land at n- water at 19. Your city of Ugodo at 20. We really can't, contains uh, one infantry. Water uncharted at 18. Water at 19. Can't find out very your much because, because um, like any strategy game, you have to we'll produce your infantry and have your units go there Location before you can actually um, see what's there. So we need to command our infantry. So we shall set him to roaming, i.e., the infantry will just wander around and find good stuff. Roaming is an illegal command for cities. Oops, sorry. Infantry one. Your infantry one set to roam. Time six. Time seven. Time eight. Free city to the west. Your infantry one awakens. Your infantry one at 17. 20 roaming one moves remaining. So our Location infantry has Copper. found a city to the west, uh, which we shall now go and conquer. Free city occupied by your infantry, one at 16, 20, all land, all land. At 16, 20, what would you like to produce? Armor, infantry. Let's have some more infantry. Time 9, your infantry, one at 16, 20 within your city of Vigdali. Your infantry, one set to roam. Time 10, infantry created at 20, 23 point in your city of Udodo. Your infantry, two at 20, 23 within so your city of Udodo. So now we have two Idle infantry units. Remaining. Infantry Location one is Copper roaming, there is land and to the infantry two to the southwest, and to the northwest. Um, is the one we're commanding now. Now, let me show you one of the really interesting features about this game, because one of the most amazing things it has is list commands. So, we pressed, if we press Alt-I to list our infantry... Infantry 2 at 20, 20, infantry 1 at 14, it will 18 roaming actually, distance 6 southwest, unselected. Not just list. Now, the clever thing about that list is that it will list the infantry in order of closest. You can command each of the infantry by pressing enter on it. You can set it to display the enemy infantry. You can set it, for example, to display any infantry you haven't got on sentry duty or any infantry you haven't got roaming. You can... The list commands in this game are so dynamic, it's unbelievable. But I think we should just set the... uh, Second infantry, infantry to roaming. Your infantry two set to roam. Time eleven. Free city to the south. Your infantry one awakens. Your infantry one at fourteen. Eighteen roaming one moves remaining. Location landing cop Ireland. Uh, we once more have a city, so let's go and conquer. Free city occupied by your infantry one at fourteen. Seventeen. There is water from the south to west. There is water from the south now, to west. This city is on 14. water, so let 17. us try making like a ship. Armor fighter. Armor fighter. Armor infantry. Armor fighter. Armor. Uh, let's try making some armor units. Time twelve. So you your infantry one at fourteen. Defense, Seventeen within your city of Rabuga. Your infantry one set to roam. Time thirteen. Time fourteen. Infantry created at sixteen. Twenty point in your city of Vigtali. And your we have another. Three at sixteen. Twenty within your city of Vigtali. Now we have Idle an- one moves remaining. Another infantry. Location unit. landing Copper Island. Now Orland. another really interesting feature about this game is like Windows, it has a context sensitive menu. So if you press the um, applications key, or indeed F10. Move infantry. Set path of infantry. F. F. We get... Set following for infantry. F. Control F. Set random movement. R. Infantry. F. Control R. A list of all the commands we can use. Set direction. I. Set infantry to roaming. R. Skip move for infantry. Space. Wake up infantry. W. Move unit info. K. K. Exit auto move mode. Control K. Info on infantry. Tab. Name current infantry. Shift F. Unit lists. Yep, F12. you can even give them names. Um, so, for example, we now have three cities, and we can see what they're producing. So we press Alt-Y for cities. Big at 16. 20 producing infantry units distance 0. 3. Now, the game has automatically named the city. We could give it a name ourselves if we want. We could get it na- listed by number, or we could have a, uh, for example... Rumbu at 14. It. 17 producing armoured units distance 3 southwest. Unselected. Vugodo at 20. 23 producing infantry units... Land at 16. Land at 16. Victory at 16. You got at Victory at 16. 20 producing infantry units distance to south. So, that is really what I think is quite fantastic about this game. The amount of dynamic control and the amount of dynamic ways you've got to view the interface. And you can have literally hundreds and hundreds of units on the map. And you don't need to worry about where they are because you can just go to any point on the map. Land at, land at, eight, land at 19. 22 in Cop Island. Now, suppose I wanted to send my infantry here, I just press Alt Y. Infantry 2 at 17, 23 roaming distance to northwest. And that's the closest infantry, you see. That is what makes this game truly fantastic. And um, that is what truly impresses me, and I probably will be buying this game pretty soon. 
Quit the NA time of conflict. Quit the NA time of conflict. Are you sure? No, no. Quit the Yes, quit. If you quit immediately, some of your units may not be moved for this round. Yes. Quit the NA time of conflict. Are you sure you would like to quit? Yes, quit. If you quit immediately, some of your units may not be moved for this round. Would you rather schedule the game to quit at the end of this round? Yes, no, no, all round. One move, load game, help, option, map builder, quit. And, as you heard, it has a map builder that lets you build your own maps. And uh, even name sectors for your own maps. In fact, there is a Battle of Britain map um, that comes with the game, which will let you um, actually fight the Battle of Britain and, um, you know, um, control the, uh, the famous battleships of the day and uh, all the rest of it. And, as I said, just like with Entombed, it really is impossible for me to show much of Time of Conflict in, um, well, this amount of time. I am having a time conflict. Ha ha. Um, but hopefully that will show you some of the really quite intriguing and things and quite dynamic things that are being done with audio games at the moment. And uh, it's actually quite an exciting time in terms of audio game development because we have these games and um, also now we have produced the first ever audio development toolkit um, by Blast Bay Studios, the BGT, um, which is an audio game creation language to make programming of games easier. So hopefully, you know, I think the future is looking pretty bright as far as games are concerned. And I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration. As I said, more information can be found at audiogames.net. And this is Dark saying goodbye for now.